everyone, it's Ashley here. Um, I'm here to just do a advanced Lightroom tutorial for you guys. This is pretty much for those of you who have experience with Lightroom and know the basics but kind of want to dive a little bit deeper into it and find out some of its tricks. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm working on some um, food photography that I did on New Year's Eve. The first um, thing I want to show you that I really like is this button right here. There are different options for viewing the altered image and the original image and I use this a lot to make sure that I'm not straying too far from the original. As you can see the image on the right I just brightened up a little bit and then also sharpened it up. And you can just really kind of do a side by side comparison. There's also a bunch of different ways you can do if you want a little bit more in depth you can do side by side like that. Um, but yeah, like I said. This just really helps me to um, be able to compare side by side and make sure I'm not going too far in my editing and straying too far. Alright, and then to go back you just click on the um, single button right there. A second tip that or trick that I have found so helpful is the sync button. So this image I already altered it like I want. My next image is pretty much the same thing, but just a little bit different, um, and just for the sakes, let's say I want these two images the same. What I do is I just click on the image that I already altered, hold down um, the shift key, oh, let's try this again, <laughs> so yeah, hold on the shift key and click so that they're both highlighted, and you'll see this sync button come up here. Click on that and it gives you options for everything that you may want to sync. I just leave this alone and um, click check synchronize and it'll pretty much transfer the effects that I did in my first image to the second one. So this is great if you're doing a bunch of images that all have the same lighting and you want to apply the same techniques. Maybe they just all need a little bit of sharpening or maybe they should all need to be brightened and that way you don't have to go through every single individual image and do it. Um, as you can see that one is pretty much the same as the first now and that way you don't have to go through every single image and um, correct them. You can cor cor um, correct them as a batch which is extremely helpful and something I do all the time. Um, mostly you know if I'm kind of doing just photos for myself you know these are just for New Year's Eve or if I'm just doing photo for like families or something where um, I don't really need to be too precise um, if they're just personal photos I'll definitely be using that and it's a huge time saver alright so the next thing I want to show you guys let me scroll up here that I use all the time is this little paintbrush right here Hopefully you can see that there you go so just click on that and you'll get a variety of options here and pretty much you can choose your options and this um, choose your options choose your brush size down here and this allows you to draw on one part of the image without affecting the rest of the image pretty much just like in Photoshop where um, you just have a paintbrush so let's say I have a little bit of brightness on here. Let's say I kind of want to brighten this area up. Let me move my brush a little bit. So let's say I just want to brighten this area up. I'm just going to click, drag it over, and it'll, it'll just brighten up the areas that I want brightened. And so this is great. I use this a lot for blur. If I want the background blurred, I use this for if you know maybe the sky is blown out I'll um, use this and it just works great and one thing I like about this is you can go back afterwards so say you know maybe that wasn't enough brightness for me but I, you can still slide these bars and it'll still change the um, effect so I'm just gonna kinda overdo it for you guys here so you can see where I colored and you can kind of change these until you press the done button you can still adjust these so I typically color my area in and then adjust afterwards just to see what I kind of like and so I'll go ahead and do that for now another thing you can do is this says show selected mask overlay 
click that and it'll show you the spot that you have painted on. This is great, you know, when I'm kind of doing eyeballs or if I'm doing face um, retouching, I'll use this a lot because I typically apply like blur to, you know, maybe the forehead, the cheeks, the chin, but I don't want to go near the eyes or anything. So this is a, just a really great tool to help me shows you very nicely where you've applied everything and make sure everything you've got everything done so I use that all the time and you just click it on and off and then when you're all done simply just press the done button so that's one uh, another huge thing that I've kind of used as I go through let me see if there's anything else Um, I do really enjoy these saturation, hue, saturation, and luminance bars. Typically, I use these to um, darken the blues in the sky. So I will just go ahead and move the the blue saturation bar over here, or the aqua one, or you know maybe if I'm doing something where I really want to pop the red out, I'll just move the bar over. And um, these are great tools if you haven't discovered those guys yet. But yeah, I think for the most part, everything you should be pretty familiar with. All right, so next I want to move on to exporting. And there's a couple of really nice export features that you have. The first is if you go over to the print menu, you can print um, diptychs and triptychs, which not a lot of people know of. If you just go right over here, there is... Um, multiple ways you can see so you can see you want to do two seven by fives you could do that you want to do four you could do that and just kind of select your photos this is a great way for you know if you are doing blog or anything like that and you want to do a diptych or a triptych just kind of find your right setting and then you just do print to file and it just print to file right here and it just saves just like a JPEG so I use this a lot um, a lot of times you know if I'm doing a portrait and I'll do one where the portrait is very close up and then I'll do one where it's further away I kind of like to have those two side by side so I can contrast them and it seems like a lot of photographers like to do that as well so that's another thing I like to do um, let me see so another really important tool that I have been using a lot of, and I think this might be my last one, is a watermark. Pretty much what I do is when I go to export, so when I'm all done, I've selected my photos I want to export, choose the folder and everything. Um, I simply check this watermark button and this will put a watermark in all of my photos. I used to, before I found this, I used to go through my photos and do them all one by one, and it was horrible. Now I simply scroll down, have the watermark button checked, and it'll place the watermark where I've designed it to. And if I don't want a watermark on an image, maybe say I'm trying to print it or something, I just uncheck it. So super easy. To make watermarks, you just go to the Edit Watermark section at the bottom of this menu. It should pop up here. This is my image. You can, um, as you see, this pops up. You can either do text. I like to do um, an image, and you can choose an image right here. You can do text, graphic, or text. And you also have the um, opacity so you could have it very transparent if you want or have it at full opacity um, there's also there's a lot of buttons that you can really play with and um, just see and then you can also there's also options to place it different areas so if you really want it in the middle or in this corner you get the idea but that's just a great tool um, that's how I watermark all of my images and it was really really helpful so those are pretty much some of the more advanced techniques that I've been using that have really helped me with time production and I just really hope that you have enjoyed this and I will talk to you soon good luck